Hello everybody, it's Crafty Rhea and I'm back again with another video. These are two Christmas cards that we're going to recycle. They are um, pretty large cards, but I'm going to cut them down so they fit on an A2 size card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. This is the standard card size. If you take a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock and you fold it in half and then you cut that in half. That's your standard A2 size card. So I have a template that I made a long time ago and it is um, three and three quarter inch by five inches. So it's a half an inch smaller all the way around than this. That gives us room for matting. And I always like to use something like this before I cut down a large card. I wanna make sure I'm not gonna take away any of the important part of the image. And as you can see, if I place this on this card, there's still plenty of really good image there. Same thing with this. If I place this up in the corner because I want to get all those candy canes in, it still leaves a good portion of the card at the bottom. So that's that will be good. So we will start by doing the candy canes. I have this red construction paper that I will use to mat it on. It's a perfect Christmas red. I have a huge pack of this construction paper that I got at Hollow's Paper Craft. So I'm going to start with this one. I know I want to use everything in this upper corner, so that's what I'm going to base my cut on. First I'll cut the front off and then I will cut out the top and the edge, or the left side and the edge. I'm gonna cut it right up along the line of the white glittery border. So I know I need to keep this part in the card. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut at, at five inches this way. Just measure that at five inches. And then I know I need to cut this at three and three quarters. There we go. And that leaves us a good size image to make the card with. And then I will cut out the inside sentiment. I like to reuse the sentiment on the inside whenever possible. Straighten out my cutting board here. I will set that aside and then I will cut this so there is just a really small border. I will cut this at five and three eighths by four and one eighth. So I'm cutting this an eighth of an inch smaller than the card base. So let me see how it looks there. So it just has a really small amount of white on the edge. And then this will go right in there and it'll have a really nice red border. I like the way that looks. Now this card could pretty much be considered done but I'd like something to take up some of this room. I found this sentiment in my stash of card scraps and I thought it would go cute along the bottom. I want to decide if I want to mat it on some red. I think maybe just the white 
will stand out. <clears throat> I have these little candy cane stickers that I could put on each side of it. Yeah, I like that. I think that'll dress it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this together. And for this, I will use my Elmer's glue with a fine metal tip from Art Glitter Glue. If you haven't seen, <clears throat> excuse me, if you haven't seen my video that talks about the comparison of Elmer's glue to Art Glitter Glue, you might want to go back and look for it. It is really awesome and it will save you a lot of money. I think the two are very comparable. The only difference I can tell is the price. Then I will put this one down. I like to use a wet glue when I'm using construction paper. Sometimes I find that the tape tears the fibers of the construction paper. If you hear noises, my husband's cooking dinner and he has various timers going on. And I will put that right there. It'll overhang the edges, but that's okay. I'll trim it off once I get it on there. Quickly put the my um, topper stopper into my glue. I find this doesn't clog as easily as art glitter glue either. So that is a plus. And I will, first let me trim the edges. I want to trim the edges of this to match the card. I want to burnish this down really good. I put a lot of glue on the back. I shouldn't have put so much. Okay, and then I will put these two little candy canes on here. I want to try to make a match up a little bit if I could. There we go. I think that's really, really cute. Super easy and I let most of the card do the work. I didn't do a whole lot of extra goodies to it. Then I will put this on the inside. I always like to try to find a scrap I have and see if I can make it work. No, it doesn't work on there. I'm gonna make this one have a really big red border. less cutting to do. And this card already has a lot of glitter on the front, so it didn't need a whole lot. makes the inside look pretty and there's still plenty of room to sign the card. There we go. Now on to the next card. 
this one. So I know I want to have the horse and buggy and that house in it. And let's see how far down I could bring it. I might want to just kind of have it like that. So there's those full trees. Okay, let me start by cutting it in half. In the inside of this card, the writing is over the words. So I think I'm going to just cut off this Merry Christmas and use that on the inside. I'll use that for the sentiment on the inside of the card. So I want to cut this. I want to kind of eyeball where I want it to be. Right on the edge, you find, I usually find something on the front of the card to use as my guide there. I think I'm going to cut it in a little bit more. Yeah, I think that'll work. And then I will cut it this way to make it at three and three quarters. And then for top to bottom, I want to look again. I'm going to cut right to the top of those trees, the shorter tree, and then I'm going to cut and make it five inches. There we go. So that image came out pretty good. I usually try to find a little landmark on the card rather than marking it with pencil. If I don't have to, I don't like to. So I have that. And I found this piece of cardstock in my stash that I thought looked really, really good. So let's trim that out. And I want to make this be at five and one eighth. No. I want to make it at four and one eighth. I'll cut it the other way. Four and one eighth by five and three eighths. Good thing I had enough left over to do that with. There we go. So we have that piece on there that looks really good. Now I'm thinking I might want to make this card a little bit three-dimensional. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to fussy cut right around that bridge. I'm going to pop that bridge up a little bit. And just fussy cut right the edge of that. If you see an element in your picture that you could do like a hill or something like that. You can always do that and pop it up a little bit. I think that looks really cute. So I will go ahead and adhere this down. I will use the Elmer's glue again. This is just regular cardstock. It came in a six by six pad, I think. I've had it for years and years. I hardly ever use it. But I thought this color worked really good. And then I will put this piece down.
and then I will raise this piece up. I have these humpers that one of my viewers sent to me or foam tape if you don't want to call them humpers. Bill from Tracy and Bill calls them humpers so that is where that comes from. Let's see if I can get it to open. There we go. And I think the first round I'll have some tape on, on it to hold it closed in a circle. There we go. And I will put a couple of these on here. These are easy because I don't have to cut them down. I love it. Okay. And let's see how that's going to look right up on there. There we go. Yeah, I think that'll look pretty good. So I will take these pieces off. I don't have to get my scissors all gummed up with these. I like that. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to just line it up as if I was putting it in there flat. There we go. I wanted to get that edge lined up in there. Now if you have room on your card, you can overlap your pieces, meaning I would make it a couple millimeters higher and then to the right, but I didn't want to cover this guy up, so I left it the way it is. There you go. I think that looks really, really cute. And I don't think I really need to do much of anything else to the front of this card. I think it is really good. Let's see about this for the inside. It might be too wide for the inside. Let me cut it as close as I can to the words Merry Christmas and see where we are. And I think that'll work. Let's see what I have to mat it on. I didn't do a good job with that paper there. I do have this red hanging out left over. I don't think I have anything else within reach. I didn't plan ahead. So I'll go ahead and just use this red. I don't want to make it too wide. I'll leave the pin out for a second. I don't want to make it too wide because I want it to be able to fit on the inside of that card. Okay. There we go. That will work and we will put it on the inside. These were quick and easy cards just with a couple little extras to make them look a little more than just gluing the card to the front of the card stock. Now of course you can just pretty much glue the card right on there and it will look pretty good. You don't have to do a lot of extras, but I went ahead and did a little bit of extras. There we go. I do want to say I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, 
go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button. There'll be plenty more videos coming in the near future. And hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of them. If you haven't yet headed head on over to my Facebook group Create with Crafty Rhea. We're having a blast over there. I posted a, a video of my bird Crichton there so you can get an idea of what he looks like. Thanks again everyone for watching and until the next video you know what to do. Go get crafting. Bye bye.